gathering thanks for our sanctuary from the shred. In a world of madness, we have found order. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2021 science fiction thriller Glass House. A film that is directed by Kelsey Egan and it stars Jessica Alexander, Kitty Harris, Adrienne Pierce, Hilton Pelser and Anya Taljard. Now the film is set uh, at uh, some point in the future. There's been some kind of pandemic or something like that. Um, and this family, so to speak, are living in this glass house, protecting themselves from something called the shred, which is some form of toxin that affects the memory uh, and is ultimately fatal. Uh, they spend their days guarding the glass house for any unwanted uh, visitors, and usually anybody that turns up on the grounds is shot immediately. Um, but one day there is a stranger that comes... Um, played by Hilton Pelser, a man who they allow into the complex. Uh, some of them believe he may be their long-lost brother. And once there and recovered from his injuries, um, there is um, betrayal, distrust, sexual tension, a whole array of things that start going wrong inside and they start rotting from the inside out. Right, what are my thoughts on Glass House? Well, if any of that sounds familiar, you're probably quite familiar with the Clint Eastwood film called The Beguiled, which I do believe they remade a few years ago with Nicole Kidman. I could be wrong, but I think they did. I haven't seen the remake. But I'm quite familiar with the Clint Eastwood film. This, for me, is a remake or re a retelling of The Beguiled. It is very, very similar. Um, a lone man, you know, is taken in uh, by some unsuspecting females and he then begins to seduce and corrupt uh, each of them in his own way. Um, and then it, it essentially rots the distrust between them all, um, the relationship and the rituals and routines it have in place. It all goes to tatters, basically. So that essentially is what this film is. Um, with a sci-fi twist. Now, the film is advertised as a science fiction, and that, for me, is only because of the concept of the film. There is very little on display here that will um, be attractive to a science fiction fan, other than the story and the concept. Um, it, 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 there's an argument for it to fit in that category and for not to be in that category. Put it this way. If you're watching this film thinking it's going to be like some post-apocalyptic, you know, zombie film, um, you're going to be hugely disappointed. It is not that at all. It is very much a thriller-stroke drama um, than a science fiction film. The only science fiction aspect of this film is the story and the concept, you know, in regards to the fact that they're living in this house, uh, when they go outside, they have to wear gas masks because of this toxin um, called the shred that will drastically affect people's memory. Now, this stranger, uh, much of the film is centered around this stranger. Is he or isn't he the long lost brother? And he kind of plays on that with you as an audience member and the people within this glass house. Um, because they're not sure if they're affected by the shred in regards to aspects of their memory. He claims, you know, uh, that he's the, the lot, he's their brother. Um, some believe him, some don't. Um, so it causes this huge unrest within this structure and routine. Um, um, in regards to how the film looks and things, it's absolutely fine. It, yeah, it's, you could describe it as a low budget film, but um, it's it's perfectly you know, adequately directed. Um, the performers are all absolutely fine. In fact, they're more than fine. They're absolutely um, deliver their performances. Um, I don't have a problem with any of the performances here in this film. They're all of a very, very good standard. Um, for me, though, I think, uh, is this film for you? I think that will very much depend on um, if you're quite happy to sit back and watch like a slow burn type drama stroke thriller um, and watch like this 
this disruption slowly take place within this setting, you know, in regards to, uh, like I say, there's the, there's lots of sexual tension, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to seduce uh, some of the young girls in there and vice versa. There's obviously an attraction. Um, and again, very much like the Beguile, if you've seen the Beguile and that sort of stuff. So there's all that sort of stuff going on, all this distrust. And it's it, it percolates throughout the whole film until obviously, as you could imagine, it comes to a head by the end of the film. So will you be satisfied with the conclusion of the film? It really depends on how engaged you were throughout the film. I genuinely think there's a lot of people watching this will have an issue with the pacing. Um, for me, it didn't stand out in a sense of uh, an original film. It just, for me, did feel like a retelling of The Beguiled. Um, it didn't, for me, stand on its own two feet in the strength of its own story and setting. Um, it's set slightly in the future, or obviously The Beguiled was set like in the Old West sort of thing. So it's like two different time settings, very, very similar story. So if you like well-made thrillers with good performances and a fairly gripping and engaging storyline, and if you haven't seen The Beguiled, you might enjoy it a little bit more than me. But me personally, I'm going to give this one a 5.5 out of 10. There wasn't enough originality here for me to be completely engaged in the film, but you may think differently. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll be back with plenty more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.